Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Ramson. And I'm Summer Inanen, and we are nutritionists here answering your health questions. So, in today's episode, we have a question from Angie in Edmonton. What's up, Angie? Uh, I try to eat a varied diet as much as possible and prefer to get all my nutrients from food rather than supplements. Good for you. I keep hearing that I need to take vitamin D uh, as a supplement, though. What do you ladies think? Good question, and this is something we get asked all the freaking time, which is a really good question to ask. So vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, and we get it primarily from sunlight. And secondarily from our food, we really typically can't get enough uh, from our food to kind of sustain the levels we need in our bodies. So when UV light hits our skin, a special kind of cholesterol converts into a precursor of vitamin D. And then from there, it gets sent to the kidneys and the livers, goes through a whole lot of processes, and it ends up as the active form, which in fancy pants terms is 125-dihydroxycholocalciferol. Use that in your next Scrabble game, kids. <laughs> but we'll call it vitamin D3 <laughs> from now on. So, yeah, that's how it happens. It happens, and we find it secondarily in food. Yeah, so we find it in food from things like egg yolks, butter, fish, specifically the oily fish, like uh, salmon, mackerel, or herring, and fish eggs, and also uh, one of the other supplements that we really like, which is fermented cod liver oil. But that doesn't give you enough to sustain the levels that you need to be healthy. Especially here in Canada. Yeah. It's just not enough. So how do you get it if you're going to get it through the sun? Yeah. So ideally, we need to be exposing our bodies, like 50% of our body to the sun, two to three times a week to be getting sufficient vitamin D naturally from sunlight. Now, as the, all you Canadians know, as soon as it gets to September, October time, no one's taking their clothes off. It simply isn't warm enough and there isn't enough sunlight in order for us to convert it into sufficient vitamin D. So this is where supplements come in. And the fact is that the majority of Canadians are actually deficient in vitamin D, which is why we're going to recommend that all of you go and get your levels tested. So you go to your doctor, you get a requisition, and you go get your D levels tested. It's a quick blood test. And what you want is for your levels to be somewhere between 100 and 150 nanomoles per liter. Now, it varies from province to province, but here in Ontario, OHIP no longer covers vitamin D testing. So you're going to have to pay a little bit for it to happen. I think it's a crime, but that's just the way it is. Yep. So it's about $30, depending on the lab that you go to, I think. Um, but it's really, really worthwhile. So the majority of Canadians, like the average um, blood level, is about 69 nanomoles per liter, which, as we know from our kind of range that I gave you, is that we're all deficient. Yeah. And so what does vitamin D even do? Well, it helps with your bone density and your teeth. It helps to reduce your risk of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease. It also helps to prevent cancer. It helps to modulate your immune system. So it's really important, especially in the winter months when it's cold and flu season. Yeah. It also helps to prevent autoimmunity. And in women who are pregnant, it helps to prevent preeclampsia and therefore reduce um, the need for uh, C-sections. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, kind of a cool, really, really interesting one. Yeah. So the type of supplement that you want to look for, uh, there's a few brands that we recommend and we'll include them in the notes for this show. And there's a few different kinds actually you want to be looking for before you even look at brands and that is the type of vitamin D. So there's your vitamin D3 which is what we've been talking about and when you turn the label around it's going to be called cholecalciferol which means it's cholesterol based which is what you want is what your body uses. Now there's another kind called vitamin D2 which is the kind extracted from plants and the, the kind that vegans usually take, um, that's the kind of fancy pants name, so that would be ergocalciferol, and it's simply not as active in the body. It's a pre-vitamin, um, and it takes some processing to use. So we always, always recommend to everybody to choose a D3, the cholecalciferol form. Yeah, so you wanna, some of the brands that we like are uh, Demulsion by Genestra, which you can find at most good health food stores. Yeah. There's some other brands that you can get through practitioners only, um, such as the Biotics brand. Uh, in addition to that, other brands that you can find in good health food stores are Canprev, Natural Factors, and Thorn. And you wanna make sure that it's the uh, liquid format. Yeah, 
And those ones are really good because the vitamin D is held in either coconut oil or extra virgin um, and organic olive oil. So you're really looking at the quality of your ingredients on even your supplements. Yeah. So how much do you take? Yeah, that is the question. So hopefully you go out and get your levels tested, but a good general kind of um, dosage for everyone is about 3000 IU per day, which is going to be three drops of any of those um, supplements here in Canada. And based on um, any testing that you have, seeing a practitioner like either one of us or a naturopath is going to help you either bump up your dosage or bring it down depending on what those results come back as. Little babies should be taking about 400 IU and little people in between about 600. But really we tend to dose it on those testing results and also kind of risk factors such as is there autoimmunity in the family and things like that. And by little people, she meant children. <laughs> I don't have any children. <laughs> the other thing too is, I know we know a lot of you like the green pastures, cod liver, uh, fermented cod liver oil, and you can get some vitamin D in there, but it's about less than a thousand IUs per teaspoon. So you definitely need to bump up and still supplement on top of that. Yeah. But before you do any supplementation, always consult you know your healthcare practitioner, your doctor, or your naturopath or your nutritionist before you start any kind of supplementation. So don't just go out and start dosing this stuff. Make sure that you um, check with your doctor Yeah, know your, know your starting point for sure and what you're aiming for. Yeah. Um, one other thing I guess is that people who absolutely should be getting tested, they should be making it a priority, is people who suffer from any kind of autoimmune condition, cardiovascular disease, people with uh, darker pigmented skin, pregnant women, uh, people with depression, uh, seasonal affective disorder. Uh, is there anything else? Hmm. Anyway, there might be a few more, but just go get your levels tested. Yeah, and when you take vitamin D, take it with food because it is a fat-soluble vitamin, so uh, that's a, you're going to have a better chance of absorbing it when you take it with food. And we like to take it in the morning too because it is the sunshine vitamin, and uh, you know, taking that in the evening just is kind of con no, contra not. yeah, it's kind <laughs> of uh, contradictory to what you would find in nature. So. We have a question for you guys. Do you take vitamin D? And if so, what brand do you take? So yeah. tell us in the comments below, because we want to hear from you. Yeah. And don't forget to share this around. If you know someone that uh, is curious about vitamin D or who should be taking vitamin D, then send this to them so they get this information. And yeah. if you have questions for us, send them to asksummerandsarah at gmail.com and we'll feature you in an upcoming episode. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Angie. Yeah, see, see you later. See ya.